no hot water on a combi boiler. My name is Alan Hart and in today's video I'm back at Viva Training Academy and I'm back with Roy, the expert trainer here. Uh, Roy's an absolute amazing trainer and he's going to show us how to test for no hot water on, it's going to be on this boiler here, but it's it's sort of similar for a lot of different boilers as well. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's uh, go over to Roy. Thanks Al. Hi guys, it's Roy Fugler here at the Viva Training Academy over in Halifax. And today we're gonna to have a look at um, quite a common problem that customers give us. Poor information and they're complaining that their hot water's not performing as it should be. So we're having a look on this main Eco Elite boiler. So the first thing we need to establish is, what do they mean by the hot water's not performing? Have they got water coming out of the hot tap? Is that water warm or is it cold or what's wrong with it? So the first thing I'm gonna do is just drop the front down and I'm gonna have a look at where they've got their customer control set. So obviously if they haven't got the hot water um, control, knob sat at high enough temperature that could be the reason why the next thing i'm going to do is turn the hot tap on and see what happens this particular boiler i've got a couple of indicator lights these boilers the main eco elites same hydraulics and same electronics as your baxi platinums your baxi duotex your pot and pro maxes so anything we talk about hydraulically and electronically it's the same the main difference is the heat exchanger on the platinums and the Duotex, they have a stainless steel heat exchanger, as does the Pots and Pro Max. This has an aluminium heat exchanger, but hydraulically, exactly the same hydro block. So we'll stick the hot tap on and see what happens. So the first thing I'm expecting is a hot water demand light. That's not come on. So that's going to tell me that the boiler doesn't know it's got a hot water demand. So basically, it's not being signalled. So the next thing I'm going to do is whip the front off and have a look because this could be an electronic issue, it could be a mechanical issue. So that's the next thing I need to do is just whip the front off and have a look inside. So I've signed the two screws and I've lifted the front panel off. So the next thing to do is just drop the, uh, the electronics panel down and then I can pop the hot tap on and what I'm looking to happen, I'll just pop the two screws out. When I turn the hot tap on, what I'm looking for is a little red light coming on on the Hall Effect sensor. Now, that light hasn't come on, so that's either telling me I've got an electronic issue with the electronic side or I've got a mechanical issue. The little bobbins are not lifting up inside. So the next thing I need to do is just unclip that head and then pop a magnet to it. And if the little red light comes on with a magnet introduced to it, that's pointing to a mechanical issue. If it doesn't come on the little red light, that's more an electronics issue. So the next thing is just un unclip the head, get me magnet and pop that on. So we're just going to unclip that little head, pop it out. Obviously we've still got power onto the boiler because we need power so that this head's powered. I've just got a magnet, it's off my uh, multimeter, the little magnetic hanger from that. So if I introduce a magnet to it, as we can see now, the little red light's coming on. And if I lift the front up, we can also see the hot water demand light has come on. And the boiler's actually lit up. So we know that electronically, this boiler's operational. So the next thing is, turn the tap off, down power the boiler, safe isolation, TB118. Obviously, we keep talking about it. We're not going to go through it because we've done a lot of videos on TB118. But yeah, we're going to safely isolate it. And then we're going to drain the boiler down just on the hot water side and remove that Hall Effect sensor and replace it. So we've removed the fuse and we've carried out safe isolation. So the next thing is turn the cold water off, open up the hot tap, that way we take the pressure off it. Um, I've got one of these little gadgets. Um, it's a cartridge removal tool for the Hall Effects cartridges. It not only fits the backs, it also fits the ideal. But previous to that, I was using an 18mm box spanner. That works fine. 
Um, but I've found that on some of the boilers this gets in a little bit easier. Now that's a 15mm um, connection, so what I do I use is my little Weira 15mm uh, or little quarter inch ratchet with a 15mm long reach socket on there. So that just fits in and it fits in nicely, I can get in. I've got my gloves on obviously because um, when I'm going in there, there may be some sharp edges. The pipes could be warm if the heating's been on, things like that. So I'll just pop that, that on there. I just need to get the ratchet in, just so that I can get a little bit of leverage. And then I can just ease that round. And with the ratchet, just nicely remove it. Once I start to get it fairly slack, I should be able to get my fingers in. So that's now slack enough. So I can remove the ratchet. I'm just using my fingers now to slacken off the cartridge. That's drained out. Now I can remove that out. And I've got the cartridge out. So that's the little Hall FX cartridge which has the bobbin inside it. And as we can see, it, it's, it's had a fair bit of use as this one. And what's probably happened, it's got some dirt or debris up in the top which is stopping the bobbin moving up. I'm not going to strip this one down, I'm actually going to replace it. But before I replace it, what I'll do, I'll strip the new one down so you can see how they operate internally and you can see how that works. So we've got the new uh, Hall Effects cartridge. So the first thing we can see on the bottom of it, we've got a fine filter. So one of the problems that you can get is if the water authority has been working and they've been altering water mains and things like that. You can get blockages on there. So hot water performance, so intermittent hot water. Um, so if it's not working, so it could be that. So occasionally they need stripping out and cleaning. So just pop that off. Inside there, there's a flow restrictor. Um, it's just one of these little plastic flow restrictors. So two bits of plastic with a little rubber o-ring. And what happens is, as the water pressure pushes the inner piece of plastic, it squashes the o-ring and opens it up and slows that flow rate. And that just unscrews. Um, so underneath there, that's where we've got the little bobbin. So that's the bobbin and it's got a spring on it. So on the top of it there, that's, a ma that's the magnet. So that's where it's looking for the magnetic field in that head. So that's why the little red light didn't come on because that bobbin wasn't moving up. So if we pop this back together, and just centre that, pop the little floor restrictor back in. Just needs to be hand tight. So what I'm going to do now is I've powered the boiler back up. So I'm just going to pop that in there. And then I can show you, if I just remove that again, just pop that little bullet back up. And you can see the red lights coming on now. So I'm manually operating that, so I know that that's working. So we've got it working, so I can remove that, pop it back together, and then we can fit it back into the, uh, into the boiler. Right, so I've reassembled it. Um, you've seen how we take it out, so there's no point showing you that. Just one quick one before I put the little head back on. So this is the one we took out. On another occasion, I've actually been out to there, to these, where they've been put upside down. So the wires are pointing to the top. Now obviously the magnet, when that goes up, it's not in the right position. So just be careful, if you ever go out to one of these, where the customer says, oh, they've had another engineer out, and they're complaining about water, make sure the wires always come down from the bottom. So that's just one which, I've had it on a couple of occasions in the past. So I'm just going to pop that back on. I'm going to turn the uh, cold water on. And what's that running? As I can see, the little red light's on now. So I know that that's activating. I'll lift the front up, yep. The demand light's on and the flame light's on. So that's that boiler, boiler up and running. That's, uh, that's got that fixed now. So hopefully the customer should be happy that the hot water is there. So, just while I'm talking to you, we're in the boiler studio at the Reader Training Academy in Halifax. I'll just turn the tap off so that you can hear me better. So we're in the boiler studio, as I've just said. We've now started doing fault finding courses here. 
So if it's something you're wanting to upskill, please give our team a call. We've got some dates booked in. It's usually me that'll be doing the course, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you look at it. Um, we won't have this fault on, I'll guarantee that, because you've already seen how to fix it. But all the faults that we put on are genuine faults that you're gonna come across out there. The generic faults, so things okay, we're working on Baxi boilers, Potterton, we've got some Worcesters, we've got Idea, we've got other, other manufacturers' boilers in there. So it's just for you guys that are wanting to upskill, maybe go away from doing some installs, put another um, string to your bow type of thing. So if it's something you're interested in, um, look on the website, give us a, give us a ring at the Eva Trade Academy up in Halifax. Anyway, from this time, it's Roy Fugel saying bye-bye. Thank you very much for that, Roy. And once again, thank you to Viva Training Academy. And as Roy has said in the video, if you want to um, upskill, then you know get in touch. Put some comments on this video if you want any other types of videos as well. And we'll try and we'll do our best to help you as much as we possibly can. Thanks for watching.